Whoa. Sounds like there's some weather. We have had the most, yeah, more rain. Flash flood watch. Welcome to the rainforest in North Georgia. We've had like the craziest weather this year. People are like on fire on the West Coast, but they usually are. And we have this lush tropical rainforest. Lots of rain. Good morning, Fish Heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. It is time to finish up this two-part series. Went to the aquarium on Thursday. It's like hitting the reset button for me. It's a place where I can just kind of decompress, get ideas, try and be creative. I hope that that kind of related to you guys in a way. There's just so many different fish that you can paint, so many different color patterns, so many different schemes. Literally, I don't think that we could do it all in a lifetime. I keep saying I'd like to try, but it just seems like like all of this right here, this is stuff that I can't show you guys because I've been painting my hind parts off. I just have not been able to show you because they're not out on the market yet. So these are brand new baits for bull shad, um, several different kinds, some really cool stuff coming out this fall. Really super excited about it. Can't wait to show them to you, but I can't yet because they have not been released. They're going to be released um, in October. We are going to do a spray session today to finish up the second part of the series from the aquarium. And I have decided which I kind of knew at the time which one I wanted to do. Um, I'm going to keep it with fresh water. There's so much salt water. We can get into that and I have from time to time, but we're going to do fresh water today. I have a box that has been sitting in my office for quite some time. I did give a cool shout out on Facebook, but for all you guys that may or may not know, I've had a lot of questions lately on where do I get blanks, um, what do I do, are blanks running short, can we still get them? Some of you maybe just are hobbyists and you're painting for yourselves and you're not trying to sell. Regardless of what your situation is, there are several places and I list them from time to time. One of those places... Shane Graham and the company, it's a curious name, it's Sugar Tit Custom Baits. South Carolina, it's actually the name of a town, believe it or not. So yes, clever little name, very catchy. Um, super cool guy, super nice guy. So Shane sent me a bunch of baits and some neat stuff. He's even selling his own pre-packed hooks, just like you would get from owner. These are very cool. They come with a split ring already attached, so it makes it one step easier for you guys. You can just throw the split ring on the bait and you're good to go. Um, this came with another bait that we have fished. So just some cool stuff. He does swim baits, he does crank baits. I got a kind of a collection of both, but I think digging deep, this is what I want to do. Today, folks, we are going to make a Bozeman's Rainbow. So just to prep for this, this does come off. Um, it's a neat little tail. My only concern for this tail is that it's just half a tail, so it doesn't completely fit in. But these baits come with extra tails. So if you grab one from Shane or from your happy local distributor, um, see if they sell extra tails. Because since it's only half... Um, it might, the fish might just beat the mess out of it, but easy in, easy out. When you clear coat it, just make sure that you don't clear coat and run clear coat in here because it will be a booger to try and get back out. If you're like me and you want to get the clear coat smell out of the room or the area that you're working in, candles are a great solution, but they can get expensive. These are some relatively inexpensive items that you can pick up and I'll just kind of show you what smells I like. This is a birch leather amber made in the United States out in Cali and this runs for about nine dollars and it's one of those wood wicks. Really nice clean smell. Coconut citrus amber. Yeah I burn them all at the same time. It's actually pretty nice. And this is from Walmart. I think the price point on this was under ten dollars. These are also Walmart. They're mainstays and it's a lot bigger. It's almost 20 ounces of burnable stuff. And this is pumpkin weather. It is the fall and I am a big sucker for pumpkins and Thanksgiving and family gatherings. So those are the scents in here this time of year. Oh, also this one. 
This is a cedar fig. Really nice candle. Mainstays, Walmart, except for this one. This one I got on Amazon, which I'm really impressed. I used to spend way too much money on Yankee candles. Not that they're not good. They are. They have a long burn time. But for the leather one, I think it was like $28 for something about this size. And this is a really nice solution. I'll drop a link for you guys if you want to. So this is the Bozeman's Rainbow. Beautiful fish. Very defined scaling. So we're going to deal with that here in just a little bit. I'm going to put this up here. You guys have got a version of it somewhere on the screen. And I figured that this would be the perfect type of a body for this kind of a fish got some 220 grit sandpaper it's not super fine but it's also not really thick and coarse I'm just gonna the smoothest parts on this bait on the back and on the gills and the face I'm gonna give a light sand to and just go ahead and pop this off the helping hands I'm just gonna take this random rag and wipe any of the excess dust residue off of here. You can see I've got some of my gloves. Just make sure that that's good and clean. Pop it right back in. And Shane, once again, thank you so much for the care package. I really appreciate that. Guys, go check out his website. I'll leave a description below and the link for you guys. And he is one of a few that I have worked with, and he has been very kind and generous, as is some of the other guys out there. So I will leave, leave you some opportunities to pick up some cool baits from him. And we're going to put black on here first. Just let this completely cover it. all the way around. Because if you notice on this fish in the picture, you can see how defined the scaling is. So once we adapt our scales onto this, we should be able to get a very similar effect just by angling the way we paint this bait. So that's good to go there. Heat set this real quick, we want it good and dry. Now off camera, I went ahead and secured this. This is a metal mesh screen. It is movable. Like most screen, it'll move more in one direction than it will in the other. So you have to be careful that you don't stretch these out too much or you'll get a very uneven um, type of scaling. You want to try and keep it as consistent as possible. It's going to stretch just a little bit towards the edges but that's okay um, as long as you have a secure fit and it pretty much looks like a nice even scaling pattern you should be alright. Two keys to this. Um, I fold it over this way like a clamshell and I don't cut the upper part until I have the bottom secure and then I'll kind of pinch this stuff in and finish this off. The more the merrier but you also need to watch because even though it's metal screen it will break so make sure your alligator clips are secure but don't push too hard because it can pop that out and then I just throw my excess off. There's other ways of doing this. Some guys use a hoop like this but the easiest way for this one is to just go ahead and put it together like this. The other trick to this, and I'm going to move this down to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, is to make sure that you don't have too much paint in the cup and that you have low pressure because if you blast the paint onto this, it's going to kind of seep underneath the screen, which is completely defeats the purpose of doing this in the first place. So 90 degree angle for your white and you want the white over black so that you can lay the color on and keep the color tone true. So just nice even strokes 
and we're going to get this in a couple of layers, one layer at a time. Do the same thing here. And you'll see that it's not completely white on the first pass, that's all right as well. Get underneath there, flip this back over, get underneath here. We're going to heat set it so that it doesn't seep because we are going to come back over here and get rid of the gray, make it white. Now we can just come back over, get a nice even second coat, and that should be pretty close to the way we want the white to look. Maybe just a little bit more. I might have underestimated how much I needed for two coats. Doesn't need much more though. And just nice even strokes across. I'm going to heat set this and we'll be right back. With white still in the chamber here, I'm going to add one drop of black. Get in there. And as soon as I see this turning gray, I'm going to do just a light pass. Now if we're looking at this picture, both sides are defined, but you can pretty much see I'm going to want my accent for the scaling to come across like this. And it's kind of randomizing this. I'm laying this down at an angle to where I can just shoot across the bait and get that beautiful accent. Give it a little bit of depth. Don't have to do the entire bait just in a few spots. Kind of randomize the way this is shot across. So I have a couple of different so I have a couple of different tones of yellow, different shades. I've got a bright yellow, which I've added some white to to kind of give it a, a little bit lighter of a color. A pearlized pineapple, which would be the main thing I'm shooting. And then canary yellow, which is a little bit darker as an accent. So hopefully that'll translate well. Now we shot the black from back here to kind of accent the back side of the area on the scales. And now we're going to flip this around and you'll notice that there's just a little bit down the middle here. And then we've got the rest of this. Earthquake. Dyersburg, Tennessee. I think that's on the, um, the western side of Tennessee. Flip it over and do the same thing. I'm an earth and space junkie. You guys know that by now. At least I think you do. There we go. Got the back half of this in pretty good. I'm going to pull this out. Clean this just a little bit and then pop some darker yellow in. Yep, it's open. That is super chunky. 
Gonna have to thin this. If you notice that stuff is super thick and just sludge coming out, drop some thinner in it. Obviously this is a brand new thing. I hadn't noticed it, but um, it's gonna have to be addressed on the, the next time I do anything with it. So I'm just gonna add a few darker layers in here. It's towards the center. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking this part of this up. Don't really need a whole lot. Get this out of here. Clean it out. Especially if it's chunky. You don't want that in there. And then I'm going to drop this deeper, richer canary yellow in. I might even drop just a little, maybe one drop of sunset red in here. There we go. And just towards the center, a little bit of an accent, almost make a wishbone. Flip it over and make the same wishbone from the center, the shape of a Y. I pulled out some pearl white and we are going to drop that down onto the main part of the fish. Just to give it a little bit of a sheen here. And I'm not angling that at all. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side here. see that real pretty pearl shine. Hit that real quick and now we're going to come in with some bloodline. This is expired blue. It's a really cool color. I think it'll be just almost exactly a match for this particular fish. Bozeman's Rainbow is a beautiful, beautiful freshwater tropical. With this, we're going to angle it, but the lines run down the fish. have a fairly prominent line. And then a little bit lighter on the throat. Now for this I'm not going to go up and I might even come back over and pull the scaling out of the gill plate. I'm not sure yet. I might not. So that's how we're looking so far. Flip this over to the other side. Coming down the home stretch on this one, we have just dropped some detail black magenta into here. And just, just barely, I'm going to go ahead and accent a little bit, coming one way, on both sides, and I'm going to turn it around and hit just a little bit of extra. Like we did originally on the black. And this should finish up our accent. Just right around that gill plate. A little freehand there. And then the very last part of this. 
We're going to come back with some opaque pearlescence. Not a whole bunch, just, just enough. I'm also going to shoot this across. Just to kind of give the whole fish a nice little sheen. And it heats it. Let's go ahead and pull the mesh off. See how we did. The big reveal. Bozeman's rainbow is a South American fish. Maybe up into Central America, but mostly South America. Very pretty. It has met my expectations for the scaling. Let's get some eyes on this and do a little bit of accenting around the gills. Put the tail in and give you a close up of the final reveal. For the eyes, it takes an 8.5 and they're silver eyes, so we're just going to match the hatch. I'm going to do a living eyes fish skull in an 8.5 ice. Just a little dab will do ya. Trust me on that. When it comes to this stuff anyways. And it's, this is a quick set. So if you're not used to using the Loctite Super Glue, it's, um, it's fast. I purchased these local from Christy over at Nature's Tackle Box here in the Ackworth area when she was still up and running. We do miss you, Christy. I believe, I'm not sure if you're online, drop me a comment. Make sure your pupils always point forward when you're putting these eyes in. Now, one thing to know about this fish, in addition to having the tail, that slides in. There are some moving parts on this. You've got peck fins that go in and we're going to super glue all of those because I'm probably going to lose them real quick if you don't. So what I'll do is I'll actually make a little drop here and then you got to get it right on the first shot. Or this won't work at all. So now that's in, and it's not going anywhere. Got all my little appendages in. I am going to hold off on doing these peck fins until after it's clear coated. But uh, let's show you what this thing looks like close up. So as you guys can see, we've got some beautiful definition in the scale pattern. I think I've done a fairly good job representing this particular species of fish, the Bozeman's Rainbow. I hope that I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things today. Thank you guys so, so much for stopping by the channel. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys. I hope you have a great day. Happy spraying. i uh, love to see your take on these. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Mm -hmm.